Welcome to the Purely Podcast. I'm your host, Alicia Pope, health coach, wellness expert. You can consider me your online bestie too. Imagine we're having a green juice together or a glass of wine for that matter. I believe in wellness that empowers you and lifts you up. On this podcast, you can expect a 360 degree view of wellness. But remember, there's no perfect when it comes to our health. It's whatever works for us. With that, let's dive in. Enjoy. Hello, hello, and welcome to the Purely Podcast. This is your host, Alicia Pope Errett. And today we are talking with Lexi McIntosh from Eat Well with Lex. I have followed Lex on Instagram for a long time. And now that the secret is out that I'm pregnant and expecting twins, I wanted to get her on here because she is such a an inspiration when it comes to baby food and baby food meals. And then of course, too, she is just an amazing cook and shares so many delicious recipes. And I love her story and her approach to health and wellness in general. I think it is very liberating and empowering for women. And she is absolutely incredible. So Lex is a food blogger that creates comforting and wholesome recipes that are easy, nourishing, and family-friendly. Her mission is to help women feel confident in the kitchen and encourage healthy lifestyle practices. She's also a first time mom who loves creating homemade baby food. She shares her recipes on her blog and social media platforms in an attempt to help other parents raise happy and healthy eaters. She is incredible. And Lexi and I discussed her experience growing up in Jamaica and the difference that she saw coming into the U S how her relationship with food has changed over the years, tips for eating well on a budget without sacrificing flavor and spending hours in the kitchen. And then we talk all things motherhood. So we talk about tips for first time moms and how not to lose yourself, the importance of self care. We talk about navigating the postpartum period and body acceptance and really accepting yourself through all of those changes. We talk all about cooking your own baby food, obviously, um, making your baby a diverse eater and the method that she took to do that because Aria, her daughter's meals look so good. I always tell her, I'm like, I want these meals. They look amazing. And then also prioritizing baby, having a healthy relationship with food and so, so much more. So you guys are going to love this episode. I think whether you are a mom or a mom to be or not, you are absolutely going to enjoy it. You're going to love Lex. She is incredible. And before we dive in, I want to give you my health coaching tip of the day. And I think this is really prevalent and it's definitely a tip that I've had before, but I think it's really prevalent during this time of the year at the end of January. January because January can kind of be like this whirlwind of a time. And after kind of getting back into the swing of things of after having all the holidays and all this time off, it can just feel really overwhelming diving back into things. And maybe we're feeling a little bit drained. And I just want to remind you that you cannot pour from an empty cup. And this is something that Lex and I talked about with her motherhood tips and her motherhood journey. And this is something that she had to learn the hard way after not doing it for a year. And so just remembering that you need to take care of yourself put your own face mask on first before you can take care of those other people. And the best thing that you can do for yourself is to really take that time for you each day and also have the flexibility around it. Like it can look different each day. So just knowing that it can look different and it doesn't have to be the exact same thing. It doesn't have to be this crazy elaborate morning routine or anything. It can be just a few minutes that you're dedicating to yourself so that you can really show up in the best way that you really want to. So that is my tip of the day. And without further ado, please help me welcome Lexi McIntosh to the Purely Podcast. Hi, Lexi. I am so excited to have you on the Purely Podcast. And to start off, I would love for you just to give anybody that maybe isn't familiar, just a little bit about who you are and what you do, and then we can kind of dive in from there. Thank you. First of all, thank you so much for having me. I am so grateful to be here speaking with you today. Um, But for those of you who don't know me and what I do, I'm Lexi. I'm a Jamaican-American food blogger. 
um, and a proud first time mom. And through my social platforms, I share wholesome recipes um, that are easy, family friendly, and also baby recipes as well. Um, and just a little background about Eat Well with Lex. Uh, it all started from like my desire to eat good, live good, and feel good. Um, and at the time, I was a college student, a broke college student, yeah. and that felt far. Um, I did not see many women that looked like me um, living the that girl lifestyle or the soft life. Today, that's what it's called. But five years ago, um, yeah. those are all the things that I desired to have. Um, and so I started to explore that journey on my own, um, cultivating a new healthy lifestyle, um, practices and all that. And I loved it. I loved the way it made me feel. And so I started to share that on Instagram. Um I started to share it on Instagram simply because I felt like that was the easiest way to connect with more women and to reach women that are the same age group as I am. And I just really wanted to let other young women realize or just know that it's attainable to live a soft life or a healthy lifestyle without like emptying their pockets or sacrificing flavor. Yeah. I am obsessed with your platform. And also I think that like, I want all of Aria's meals, like every single, every single time that you post about her meals, I'm like, those look so good. And also I'm just amazed by how many like diverse things that you put in her meals too. So we're going to dive into that more too. But before we do that, I want to kind of take it back to what you were talking about. So you're Jamaican American, which I think is so freaking cool. So I want you to talk a little bit about growing up in Jamaica and what it was like, and also how did it inspire you? and how you live, eat, and cook now because you moved to the U.S. in college, correct? Well, in high school. Yeah. Oh, in high school. Okay. In high school, yeah. Um, so growing up in Jamaica, it was completely different, like eating, food, all that, like a complete different um, experience. Everything was fresh, um, clean, organic. We never really had to worry about like, oh, let's pick the organic apple or the regular apple and stuff like that. Um and so that really, I guess when I moved here, I struggled with that because when I started to change the way I eat or just like eating different stuff in general and not even being knowledgeable on the fact that it's not the same. Because at the time I was younger and I brought that over into going to college, I was also a track athlete. Um, and I just realized how different my lifestyle was, how my body was feeling, how my performance was. I was always getting sick and I wasn't used to that growing up in Jamaica. So when I started to realize those things and I was like, no, this is not okay. I want to do better. I want to feel better. Um, and so when I started to look more into that lifestyle, it wasn't something that was in front of me. It wasn't, I guess, very open in the tradition also because I feel like it's not something that we as Jamaican people worry about simply because all of our food are like totally farm grown in there so having to like make that complete switch was hard for me um and so that was one of the reasons why I was so inspired to like go out and learn on my own exper experiment with stuff, like do my own stuff. And then now share it with other people who may have been in the same situation as I am. Um, but yeah, it was a huge change. And I think my desire to get that feeling from back home, the fresh organic stuff, that's what really inspired me to like start um, my wellness blog. Yeah. Which is so crazy too. Like you said, it wasn't even something that you necessarily thought about because it's just the way of life there and how it's so drastically different. I was just talking to my other friend too, who grew up in Europe primarily, and she moved to the U S in high school. And she noticed like a lot of these differences too, in how we eat and the, the processed foods and the access to things like, or having to worry about things like organic or whatever, you know, because it's just not that way in other cultures in other areas of the world. So it is, I'm sure it was probably like a huge culture shock having to actually 
worry about that. And so can you talk a little bit about how all of this kind of affected your relationship with food overall and kind of how that evolved? Because I also think too, it's like you were going through these changes in high school and college. And when I think back to myself in high school and college, like my relationship with food was just complete shit. And I think especially like being a collegiate athlete for you, I'm sure that it's like, it's, you know, you're, you're busy, right? So what, how did your relationship with food look and kind of evolve throughout that time? And maybe do you have any tips too for people that might be having a little bit of trouble kind of healing their relationship with food and also maybe having some trouble with like access to that or feeling overwhelmed in those stages of their life, trying to eat healthfully, but also wanting to have a good relationship with food too? Um, so now, when I look back, I realize that I had a terrible relationship with food, but then, to me, it was normal. Mm-hmm. It was like, you always eat the salad and everything that was green, and you're not going to eat the cookie, or it was a lot of vegetable, like, diet culture focused, um, yeah. and to me then, I didn't realize how bad that was until now when I start to realize, like, what it means to truly be healthy. Like it has nothing to do with just eating greens every day. Um, And so I'd say for anyone that is struggling with that, just have fun. Um, For me, what really helped was to pay attention to ingredients. And I don't mean just like buying like greens and eating greens all day. But if you want to make like things that you already enjoy, like the same meals that you enjoy, you can make those stuff, but just choosing like cleaner ingredients to make those. So one of my, I guess, philosophies of like living well and eating well is you don't need to be dieting or watching like your portion size and all of, all those stuff. It's more about just enjoying the process as long as you're not like overly indulging in things that are not so good for us, then I feel like that's completely fine. Um, but then... I, back then, I didn't realize how much that was hurting my perception and mindset of what it means to be healthy. Because even when I started like sharing healthy meals and stuff on Instagram, I put so much pressure on myself, like looking at how many calories are in this, like, uh, what am I using? What is the portion size? And I did get a lot of comments from people like, how are you saying like, this is healthy? How are you promoting this as something that's good for you? But then it's like a cookie or a brownie. And I'm like, well, a brownie can be healthy too. So it Mm -hmm. took some time to grow and realize what it really meant to be healthy and eat well. Yeah. I think you bring up such a good point because I have like a very similar relationship with food too, of like what I used to think was healthy and like what I think is healthy now. And I think it's so interesting when you're doing it, especially over a public platform. Like you said, you started sharing like years ago and I think our approach changes so much, but also I think like putting yourself out there and being vulnerable, it almost, it almost forces you to grow a little bit more and be like very reflective in what you're doing and the choices that you're making, especially as you begin to get a little bit more of an influence to it kind of causes you to look inward a little bit too, to see like, okay, like what, what is this or what, what does this look like? Um, but on that, on those tips too, with like the eating well on a budget, cause I think that what you do, like you said, it's like not emptying your pockets and without sacrificing flavor or, you know, spending hours in the kitchen, what are some easy tips that you would give somebody maybe just like three tips for not making this super overwhelming? Because I think that, you brought up a good point too, where I think so much of the health and wellness culture these days, I think can feel unattainable to a lot of people, or it can feel like it has to be all these like crazy superfoods or, you know, like things like that, that you're having to incorporate. And I love what you share because I think it is very attainable and, and that's part of your mission. So can you give us just like some of your top tips for anybody that might be feeling overwhelmed with that? Yes, um, that's a good one. So for me, I like to, or like the tips that I have for someone who feels overwhelmed with like eating well or like picking up what they want to eat. First off, I always start with 
taken out recipes or just like things that I enjoy overall, even if it's not the healthiest, like picking stuff that you know, you're going to eat, you know, you know, you're going to enjoy. And then if it turns out that, you know, it's probably not the healthiest, then I'll look for ingredients within that recipe that I can substitute for something else that might be better, or even just doing a little bit of research on what can I substitute for sugar if I don't want to eat sugar. And then also just have fun with it. Like don't be, don't put too much pressure on yourself. Um, You can still treat yourself at times because I'm not, I always tell myself like at least one to two meals throughout the week needs to be like a treat. Um, Everything does not have to be completely clean. Like, at least have some comfort food. But um, another tip is to plan. I think planning works really well um, in terms of taking out the, I guess, the decision exhaust or like the frustration of just like thinking about what am I going to eat? I feel like once you plan it out, like just write it out, like what am I going to eat on this day at this time? I think that truly helps to just make it easier and less complicated and then also prepping. And prepping doesn't necessarily have to be like cooking the meals ahead of time, but whatever process that will make the moment of making that meal easier, that's also really helpful. So that means like pre-chopping your veggies or just like pre-marinating meats and all that. Um, I think that truly makes like eating better, more enjoyable and less complicated and stressful. Yeah. A hundred percent. I think you're so right. And also that helps with like the budget piece of things too. I think when you plan, cause then you're not wasting food and like, you're going in like aimlessly, like, I don't even know what I'm doing with all of this. And it can be like kind of overwhelming, but when you go in with a plan and, and know what you're going to do and kind of prep things in advance, I think it's really important. And of course that takes like a little bit of discipline too, to be able to do that each week. But I feel like it's so much, it allows it to be so much easier throughout the week too. Do you have any like favorite recipes of yours that are on your blog that are that you would recommend for people to dive into if they're looking for like some healthy recipes in the new year that are kind of like all of these categories that aren't going to break the bank that are you know going to be super easy and are going to be like super flavorful too Let's take a second to chat about all that's new on Purely You for January. I am so excited about what's new in January, especially for the health coaching, because we are focusing on small habits, big changes, because you guys know that I am so passionate about tiny habits adding up to make incremental, monumental change in your life and actually creating lasting lifestyle change versus quick fixes, which I think is so important to hammer at home at this time of the year. So in the health coaching curriculum this month, we are covering finding your why and why small habits and changes work and also habit stacking, becoming your habits, your habits actually becoming part of your identity, consistency, and how your environment will impact your habits as well. So if you are wanting to change and create new habits for the new year, then this is definitely the time to use Purely You. Check out the free trial. You can claim your free trial via the link in the bio in the show notes. And also remember, if you shared this episode specifically, you can be entered for a chance to win a one-year subscription to Purely You. So definitely take advantage of that as well. And there are also so many new flows up from January and December that are coming up. There's new prenatal flows. There's a new prenatal section. And every Friday this month, there will be a new flow added. So, so much new on there and it is the best time to really just dive in. And the January calendar is great too. So if you're looking for body loving Pilates to really prioritize your mind, your body, and really becoming your happiest, best self this year, then now is the time to try Purely You. Claim your seven day free trial. Link is in the bio and the show notes. And without further ado, let's get back to the show. I'd say one of my go-to, it's always a treat for me. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like treats are always, always because those are the, I guess those are the stuff that people struggle with a lot, like having healthy treats or you know just wanting to snack. Um, and some of my favorites are like healthy peanut butter cookies, um, almond flour, uh, brownie. What else? It's like so much. I can't even think about them off my head right now. But um, there are a ton of recipes that I would highly recommend um 
some of my pasta recipes as well people would think like i'm not eating pasta because that's not healthy but um i really enjoyed the it's a veggie lasagna that's mm. really good as well um that's awesome. I love that. And now I really want those peanut butter cookies or almond flour brownies. I'm like, I'm going to go look those up and maybe make them this weekend. Cause I think you're right. It's like, sometimes it's about having those things on hand because I think so often, like when we think about like you were going, when you were talking about going back to like what you used to think health was, and that's where I was too. And it was very like restrictive. And I think that just by like, I always like to call it like elevating like certain ingredients and like kind of swapping out certain ingredients, you can enjoy it. But then feel really good both physically and emotionally and have it without sacrificing any flavor or sacrificing like how you're feeling and things like that and kind of like enjoy it in moderation and have it because I think when we restrict then it's like then we have these binging episodes too because we're not giving ourselves anything that we want and also like that's not fun or not (laughs) not anything um you know it's like it's not a fun way to approach life but speaking on those swaps and everything like you mentioned like the pasta like swapping out um certain flowers are there some of like your top swaps that you would recommend for somebody that's maybe wanting to kind of start the new year with their pantry being like very supportive of what they're doing like any things that you you just typically swap out in your cooking or baking or anything like that that you would recommend for anybody? Yeah, sure. I actually have plenty of recommendations. Yeah. Um, so for me, I always start with like the cooking oil um, from like canola and vegetable oil and maybe switching for something that's healthier, maybe coconut, um, avocado oil, always have those on hand. Um, flour, uh, we love, I love making um, oat flour from scratch. Oh my gosh. I, yeah. I saw uh, that on your page the other day. I was like, this is so genius. I saw it the other day and it's like, it's probably so much cheaper to do it that way too. And it works well in a lot of recipes that you would just never think. It's just like a filler or you just added nutrition, but I love swapping out flour for like almond flour, cassava flour, um, oat flour, um, juices I like making juices on my own whether that's like having a juicer or a blender sugar for like date syrup uh what else maple syrup uh any type of sweetener I'll always go for dates and things and then like for pasta if you really want to switch out for a healthier pasta then you can go with like quinoa pasta um brown rice pasta and all those other pasta alternatives but I really love chickpeas pasta like the bonza chickpeas pasta me too Yeah. That's always my go-to because then I'm like, well, it's protein too. So you don't even have to worry about adding in a protein or anything. If you want to do something super, super easy. My husband's always like, well, what's the protein? I'm like, it's in the mm-hmm. pasta. And he's like, but I want more. And I'm like, I get it. <laughs> so sometimes I add more in for him, but it's, it's, yeah, I think it's, it's so, so easy, but I would love to shift gears a little bit. I told yeah. you I wanted to talk about all things motherhood. I'm like selfishly for me. I think that like ever I'm obsessed with everything you share and your like goals for what, how I want my, motherhood journey to look like. So starting off, I would love to know just in general, do you have any tips or advice for first time moms? Cause you are navigating it like a freaking champ. And so I'm sure you have some good tips for all of us. Yes. Motherhood. Wow. That's my favorite part. <laughs> I, first of all, I just have to say that I love being a mother. It's amazing. It's fun. It's hard. I'm not going to say that it's all peaches and creams. It's hard, but it's a really rewarding journey that I enjoy so much. But as a first time mom, I've learned so much. I'm not a pro, but I've learned so much in this first year of being a mom that also really just humbled me and made me grow as a person. Um, And some of my advice especially would be to just go with the flow of things, um, especially like kids are unpredictable. You just never know what to expect. And for someone like me who I thrive on like systems and routines and schedules and all that, and I learned the hard way through motherhood that that's not entirely possible. Um, and that's something that I struggled with. And so I always try to um, encourage other moms like, it's okay to want those systems and routines and schedules to stay organized, but don't get too hung up 
on those stuff where you miss out on the bigger picture. Like give yourself some grace, go with the flow of things and just understand that it's a phase. All for me, I feel like all of motherhood is a phase. One <laughs> month, you'll feel like this is so hard. What am I going to get over with? And then you go to the next phase and then you look back and you're like, this, that was not as hard as I thought it was. Yeah. So I'd say just give yourself um, some grace, um, take every day a step at a time. The days go by slow, but the years go by fast. I'm pretty sure you hear that very often because sometimes I can't even imagine that she's already one and I feel like in like the break of an eye she's going to be two years old so yeah just don't um put too much stress on yourself like kids one thing I realize is they don't really need a perfect parent they just want like a present parent that's like trying mm -hmm. their best and then also don't compare yourself to like what other moms are doing because I feel like we're all a hot mess it's just like who hides it the best yeah <laughs> like we're all just winging it so um, don't put too much stress on yourself or compare yourself to anyone and take care of yourself too. I yeah. I have to say, like, I struggle with prioritizing myself and taking care of myself as a mom because I'm just so focused on being a mom and taking care of everyone else. But one thing that I've learned and really is trying to work on is to take better care of myself because that's the best thing that I can do for my family. And you can easy, easily realize how your moods and your emotions reflect on them. So definitely put your first self first. Take care of yourself, love yourself, make time for yourself. It's hard, but even if it's just five minutes, it's worth it. Yeah, a hundred percent. I think that flexibility and just like having the grace and knowing that like you're not going to be able to stay in a rigid routine. I think like motherhood or not, obviously kids like throw a huge wrench in it, but I feel like that's such an important thing to embrace just because it's like life gets in the way, right? It's like we all love our routines and our systems and everything. And of course they like help us thrive, but I also think it is important to be flexible. So I love that tip. That's like a really, really good one. And then the other thing that I want to like dive into a little bit deeper is advice for like really not losing yourself in motherhood and keeping those elements of self-care. Like you said, like it's the most important thing to take care of yourself. Do you have any tips of like, you know, the magic time that you've been able to find that or like communicating with your partner that like when you need that certain time or whatever of like how you've actually been able to get that in? Because I think that's like one of the most important things too, of like how to not lose yourself and really take care of yourself. Because like you said, it's important to be able to show up. So do you have any like tips or things that have really helped you be able to do that? To be completely transparent, I'm just getting there. Uh, <laughs> I spent um, the entire first year not taking care of myself or prioritizing myself. And just looking back, I wish I did. And that's why I always every mom or mom to be that I have a chance to like tell like please take care of yourself because yeah when I remember like well it was just like last week <laughs> but <laughs> the end of 2022 I was <laughs> um and I was just thinking to myself like I completely winged it this year and just thinking like what did I do for myself this year and I realized I did not really do anything for myself so some things that I am working on implementing in this year that I didn't, I wish I did last year is to actually set schedule self-care time mm -hmm. and just like communicating that with my partner, like on this day at this time, this is my time. And also just, you know, that time when like after bedtime, I usually spend that time, like when Arya goes to bed and so like to work every free time I get from her is to work or to worry about anything else, like the dishes, the chores and all that. And I would say those can wait. You can leave that for another day, another time, but yourself cannot wait. You need to choose you and take that time to just, even if it means to go take a long shower or read a book. And those are the things that I'm trying to implement more is to stop worrying about the little things and using my free time to take care of me. Because once I don't have that free time anymore, I need to be pouring it into my child and I can't pour from an empty from an empty cup. So I would definitely advise anyone to just set that self-care time and anyone that's around you communicate that with them so they can be aware and help you out with that as well. 
Yeah. I appreciate that transparency because it is, it's like we, we learn from our mistakes and also learn from like ourself. And that's, that's what I feel like the whole, you know, my whole premise of like what I share on social media, for example. And I feel like you're kind of the same of sharing like, okay, yeah, I did this and here's what I learned. And this is what I wish I would do better. And that's like where you share from that place. And I think that's really, really important and, and important like for people to hear too, that it's like, it's not always perfect. And like you said, in, in advance too, you're like, some people are just better at hiding it, right. That they like, don't have it all together or whatever. And I think also too, it's like some people are also, I think you really can't compare yourself on social media because I think especially like so many people have help that you don't even realize that they have, you know, cause you might be like, well, how are they doing all these things? But you never know like what somebody's situation is or how many people are helping them or like their environment or anything. So I think that's really important not to compare yourself, which kind of brings me to like any advice that you might have for embracing that postpartum period and the journey and also like body acceptance, because I think that's also something that like, isn't talked about a lot. And I loved how like vulnerable, vulnerable you were in sharing all of your journey through that. And I thought it was like beautiful and how you were talking about like how you appreciated your body so much. And so if you have any tips for that and like kind of going through all of those changes, that would be amazing too. Yes. Uh, postpartum. I feel like <laughs> prepping for postpartum starts from pregnancy. Um, that like throughout my pregnancy, I did do a lot of like research about these stuff or just like read up on a lot of like positive things, like just how to treat myself better because I know like I was prepping myself, like it's going to be different. I know my body's going to look different. My lifestyle is going to be different. And so I took that time out before postpartum to prep myself. But I mean, not everyone will take that step or even think about the it be necessary at that moment, like, oh, postpartum, this is going to happen. What can I do right now? Um, so even if you're like in that moment, I always like try to tell myself, like, just be reminded of like the hard work you just put in or like, just look at your babies and just see how beautiful, like it's until this day, I still can't wrap my head around the fact that I actually had a baby or yeah. like birthed a baby. And just looking at that sometimes and just seeing how incredible that is that just makes me have more grace on myself and love myself anymore and just like be more appreciation appreciative of like my strength and all that I've done even like throughout motherhood and so just like seeing that you know my lifestyle has changed who I am has changed it's a complete different season I'm not used to it and it's uncomfortable but I'm really kicking ass like I'm waking up every day I'm breastfeeding I'm taking care of this human being my daughter has a smile on her face every day so just like it's positive affirmations um it doesn't really come easy for everyone but that's where it really helps me to just keep reminding myself of like the amazing thing that I just did yeah I think that's a really good tip I mean literally literally my husband and I last night were just like we were like looking at my bump and I was like I was like, can you even believe that there's like two humans in here? And we're like, no, like, you know, like we're just like, it's like, yeah, my stomach is growing, but like, I can't even believe it that there's like babies in there. You know, it's like, it's so wild. It's such a wild thing to like wrap your head around that there's actually humans and they're actually like your body is making humans. And I think you're right. Like by going back to that, that like fundamental fact that it's like your body's doing this incredible thing. It allows you to have this appreciation for your body. Um, um, but shifting gears a little bit, still staying on the topic of motherhood, but I want to talk through the baby food piece of things because like I said in the beginning, you are a champ at this and I love how much you share about what you're feeding Aria and how you're feeding her and all that stuff. And you are like so amazing at cooking your own baby food. So can you give us some tips on this and how to make it not so overwhelming? Because I feel like when, when you even mention like cooking your own baby food, people are like, wait, what, you know, <laughs> and get, and get like a little bit overwhelmed. They're like, that just seems like too much, you know? So any tips that you have for anybody that's like maybe interested in that and, and tips that have really helped you? 
Let's take a minute to talk about my ride or die for digestive and gut health, and that is seed symbiotic. If you're wondering what a symbiotic is, it is both a pre and probiotic in one amazing little pill. But actually, I take two a day on an empty stomach every single morning, and trust me, I notice when I don't take it. It combines 24 clinically studied probiotic strains that are not found in yogurt, most supplements, or fermented foods and beverages. Not only does the symbiotic benefit and improve our digestive health, but it also expands out into heart health, skin health, immunity, and better nutrient absorption. Seed not only adheres to FDA guidelines, but also all supplement guidelines globally. Seed has an on-staff scientific advisory board, and they're always staying on top of the science and are 100% transparent in sharing all the research on their product and prove efficacy. Seed ensures that all affiliates, such as myself, are educated and go through Seed University to spread science and facts rather than false claims and promotes hashtag accountable influence. You can even test your knowledge on their website through a fun little quiz. Another thing to note about Seed is that most probiotics don't even survive the trip to your gut, which is just wild. Seed obviously does and you can actually get the benefits from the symbiotic that way. Another really cool thing about Seed is that they care about the earth. You will receive one glass jar and then all of your refills come in recycled paper packaging and you so you get to be sustainable and healthy. It is a win-win. So as I mentioned, I take two pills every morning on an empty stomach. I absolutely love it. I drink it with lemon water or rose water. It is so good. Seed is free of dairy, gluten, soy, GMOs, binders, fillers, preservatives, 14 classes of allergens defined by the European Food and Safety Authority. So if you want to try out seed for yourself, you can use code Alicia15, that is A-L-Y-S-I-A-1-5 for 15% off your first month of seed. If you have any other questions, let me know, but you can also find the link in the show notes if you want to try out seed for yourself. I promise you, you won't be disappointed and your gut will definitely thank you. With that, let's get back to the show. Great. That's a great question. I was actually writing a blog post about this last night. Oh, good. Um, but, <laughs> I mean, feeding a baby can become exhausting. I like in the beginning, I was so like, excited to do it. And after I was like, oh, this is a lot. I can only imagine what other people experience. And I know like every time I see on Instagram and someone's like, how do you do this? This is so amazing. I'm like, it's not that big of a deal. But now I realize it's really a big of a deal. Um, but some tips that I have is to not overthink it. I feel like sometimes when it comes to like baby food and stuff, we overthink it like, oh my God, they need this, they need that and all these stuff. I feel like just don't overthink it and just like focus more on, you know, giving them the same thing that you eat. That's what made it easier for me as well. Like I gave Aria anything that I would eat. Mm. Um, and I know like that's easier because I was already practicing like a healthy lifestyle and choosing cleaner ingredients. So that was easy for me to just give her those. Um, but I also feel like it helps the parents to be accountable <laughs> because yeah. you have to share that meal with your child. So you're like, okay, I have to eat clean because they have to eat clean, but that yeah. really made it easier where I don't have to worry too much about making a whole separate meal for her. So if we're having something, I'll just maybe you know, if you want to add extra seasonings and salts and all those extra stuff that you may not want to give to your baby, just like take theirs out before you add um, the stuff that you want to add, all the spices and things. And then also planning. I'm a huge planner and prepping and all that. Um, prepping ahead. Uh, you can always prep baby food and freeze them for however long you want, up to six months. So that's helpful. But usually I like to like plan out exactly her meal plan. This is how we do our meal plan. And then I just prep those stuff. Um, just like simply just like washing the veggies and chopping things, um, not necessarily cooking everything at once. And then just having those ready to go, all her snacks. And so it just takes the thought process out of it for me daily. Because one of the things that I really struggled with even like being a stay-at-home mom. And I can only imagine how it is for someone who's not a stay-at-home mom. It's just thinking like, oh, it's lunchtime. What is she about to eat? So that yeah. really helped me to just have that in my notes. I just pull up my notes like, okay, it's snack time. You're about to eat some blueberries. Mm -hmm. um, but that was helpful. And then have fun with it. Uh, don't 
force, I guess, your little one to eat things that they don't want to eat. Like, give them things that they enjoy. Um, let them have fun with it. Let them use their hands. It gets it gets messy. It takes a lot of patience, but just let them be and explore. And then at the same time, you also learn what they like. Just like us, we don't really like every food, every vegetable, every fruit. And that's one thing I had to like tell myself, like, even though I want her to eat this apple, if she doesn't like the apple or the avocado, I'm not going to force her to like it because I like it. So just pay attention, eat with them, sit and eat with them at the same time. Like, I try my best to not just let her eat by herself or just sit there and watch her. So uh, sitting down at dinner time, lunchtime, and just eating together, it's more encouraging. It makes them want to eat, especially if you're eating the same things. Um, and yeah, just have fun. Yeah, I love those tips. And on that topic of like, you know, not forcing them to eat something that they don't want to eat and they're going to like different things or whatever. How have you approached like that with making her like a diverse eater? Because I feel like so many kids these days, and this is probably more of like the American culture too. And I'm sure like probably different in Jamaica, I would assume, but I feel like kids meals like aren't a thing in other countries, <laughs> but I feel like it's like, it's always like, okay, here's a uh, mom and dad are going to have this with like all these different foods, whatever. And you're going to have chicken nuggets and French fries or whatever it might be. But I feel like your meals for Aria are so diverse and they're always like incorporating different vegetables and proteins and fruits and things like that. So do you have any tips for that? or like what method did you use in approaching that to make her a diverse eater and not a picky eater? Because I feel like that is like when you get a very picky eater as a kid, it's really hard to deal with. And I think it makes your life a lot easier. Like you said, it's like when they're eating what you're eating sort of thing. Yeah. Um, I really think that introducing everything at a very, a very early age and giving them that control really helped. I know like I started Aria really early. Most people thought that I was crazy, but I started her at four months as recommended by her pediatrician because she was ready in terms like physically. Um, and I had a whole sheet, a spreadsheet of like different things that I wanted her to try. And I gave her each thing one at a time for a while. So if it's avocado, I'll let her have the avocado for a couple of days. And then once I realized that she, what she was okay with, I started pairing them together mm. and then like mixing stuff, mixing purees or mixing like vegetables and things. And then just always giving her a variety, always just putting three different things or multiple things on her tray or on her plate so she can pick what she wants to eat. Um, and I really feel like Aria, I never, I, I did not really have struggles with her when it comes to eating. I'm not sure exactly what made her that way. Maybe she's just a little foodie and loves to eat. <laughs> um, but I feel like the routine that I had from the beginning was just, like I said before, eating with her sharing the same food, just making the process in general enjoyable. I think that really helped and not really pressuring her too much. Like, oh, you need to eat this. Let me wipe your mouth. Let me clean up. Just like let her have fun. And I mm -hmm. think from that, she enjoyed the process of eating. Even now, like her favorite word is eat. <laughs> like her favorite word inside is eat. If you say snack, That's amazing. <laughs> overall. I love that. The, um, the experience. Um, but yeah. 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 Those, those are really good tips. And, and how do you like kind of on that same topic, I think that something that's really interesting and something that like kind of comes to the forefront of my mind when I'm thinking about like motherhood and parenting or whatever is the like sugar epidemic and uh, with kids and how a lot of times like sugar is used as like a reward. Like, Oh, if you're going to be, if you're good, then you get ice cream, et cetera, you know, like, or you get candy, whatever that might be. And of course it's like when they're when they're going to certain things, you know, with like sugar everywhere, et cetera. How are you approaching this in motherhood and ensuring too, that it's like that your, your daughter has a healthy relationship with food? Because as we said, it's like, 
both of us have this, this history of not having the best relationship with food and like, and what we thought like quote unquote healthy was. And so I think it's like such a delicate balance of managing, okay, yes, we're not going to have sugar all the time, but also like we want to have a healthy relationship with all foods, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So how are you approaching that? And maybe, maybe you haven't had to dive into it too much yet, but I would love like your thoughts on it. Yeah, so I haven't entirely reached that stage yet because she's not at the stage of saying no. I am not ready for that stage. But <laughs> um, some like other moms have told me before, even as it comes to eating, if she rejects something or just wants something else, like maybe just carbs or sugar and things like that, um, not to give it to her, but not like, oh, you can't eat that. Especially if it's like, say, for example, we're having dinner and she doesn't want to eat what she's given and she's rejecting it because she's expecting something else. Um, I was just told like, don't replace it with something else because then she'll build up that idea of mm-hmm. that thought that, well, if I don't eat what I'm given, then I'm going to get what I want. Um, and so what I use, what I try to do is because sometimes she can be like that. I try to put the same thing in a different form. <laughs> so <laughs> there are times where, may not want um to eat so we always get like these once upon a farm meals that she likes them sometimes and then sometimes she doesn't and i think it's just a matter of texture so if i realize that well you ate this yesterday you don't want to eat this i'll probably blend it in a smoothie so i try different approaches of um getting her to eat it so maybe like showing her like i'm enjoying it you can enjoy it too or putting it in a form that i know that she likes so she really likes smoothies and purees and things so I always know like, well, if she's not eating it in solid form and I really want her to eat just to get that nutrition, I'm going to put it in a smoothie because she's going to drink it regardless. Um, yeah. And then as for like sweet stuff, I've, it wasn't until like her first birthday was the first time she tried sugar and that was like her birthday cake. I gave her a little bit of that um, and then like juices and things. She really likes juices, but she doesn't ask for it or want it unless she sees it. So I'll try to make sure that when I'm eating, if I want to have juice, I don't let her see it um, <laughs> or I'll put her up or so I'll hide it. You just have to yeah. hide. Yeah. Sure hide and because they'll want it as well. But growing up, I know like the trend that I saw or like what I've seen like other mom friends do, like one of my mom friends, she told me, well, you know, kids are always going to want what you're eating. Like say you're eating a cookie or a candy and they want some as well or something like try not to just like give it to them because you're going to always expect that when you're eating, you're going to always give it to them. Um, so one thing that I'll do if I'm eating a cookie and Aria wants some, then I'll go get her own cookie and put mm. it in her plate or bowl. And be like, well, here's your cookie, um, but not flat out just saying like, no, you can't have this, and then just ignoring her. Yeah, yeah, but those like are said, really good tips. All about enjoying it and letting just as how we want to have fun with eating, and that's our whole perception of eating. Like, enjoy the process. I think we should respect their wishes and desires as well to enjoy. Because I feel like a lot of people look at babies in a way like, well, they don't know, they don't. But I always feel like babies need to be treated the way we want to be treated as well. Yeah, 100%. And kind of like starting to treat them almost like they are grown humans because they are, you know, it's like where they are going to be grown humans eventually. So it's just kind of like starting to treat them that way from a young age. Well, this has been absolutely amazing. And I end my podcast with a question around self-love because it's so prominent and such at the forefront of my health and wellness journey. So I would love to know what self-love means to you. I love self-love. I'm talking about <laughs> self-love. Well, um, self-love. Self-love to me is having like a deep appreciation and positive regard towards yourself. So like understanding who you are as a whole, your value, your potentials, your abilities, and embracing that. Um, so showing up for yourself the way you would show up for someone that you love or talking to yourself or about yourself the way you would profess your love to someone you truly care about. So ultimately, 
showing up for yourself again and again and again. Um, and to just wrap it up, like I like to remind myself, like when I struggle with prioritizing myself and self-love, um, I like to ask myself, like, if I can't be trusted to care for myself, how can like the people that I care about trust me enough to care for them? Mm-hmm. And it all yeah. goes back to like, I need to tell my daughter how to love herself or how to be loved. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think you bring up a really good point because they are. It's like at the end of the day, they, as much as we would love for them to like do as we say, they're going to do as we do and they're going to notice and like mimic what you're doing. And I think that's so important to really prioritize your relationship with yourself for them to have a really good relationship with themselves like down the line. And I think that's so important because I'm like with, especially with daughters, I don't know. It's like, I feel like women are, absolutely incredible. And like, there's so many things out there that are kind of like, you know, affecting our self-love and our relationship with ourself and things like that. So I think it's like even more important. So I love that so much. So where can everybody find you, follow you, where they, where can they get your recipes? Tell them all the things. Oh, yes. So you can find me on Instagram. I'm always, that's where you get all the latest updates at eatwell.withlex um, and also find all the blog stuff and the long form content on my website eatwellwithlex.com as well as TikTok. I'm making my way over to TikTok <laughs> and that is at eatwellwithlex. <laughs> Amazing. Well, thank you so much, Lex. This has been so much fun. And I'm sure I'm going to be DMing you questions too, as when, uh, as soon as my, my girls start eating too, I'm going to be like, please help. (laughs) But thank you so much for being here. All right, love. I hope that you enjoyed that episode. And if you are new here and find yourself wanting more, you can find me on all social platforms at purely Pope and the purely podcast on Instagram specifically, and you can claim your seven day free trial of purely you, your home for becoming the best version of you with access to monthly health coaching and body loving Pilates flows in three different categories, elevate cardiolatis and mindful mat with new flows and movements added weekly, as well as monthly challenges at purelypope.com. Thank you for being here. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. I'll see you next Thursday. Bye now.